Do y'all want me to get to, there's a few hip-hop things we could touch on. You want me to get to those before the announcement? Because I don't want to make the announcement and then all y'all want to talk about for the whole stream is the announcement. I will. I could make the announcement and just, I'm going to elaborate as much as I can. The announcement is not a Cardi update. So if y'all want a Cardi update, get your Cardi update now. <laughs> y'all, y'all like fiends. Cardi update, Cardi update. What's the Cardi update? What's the Cardi update? Six nine update. What's six nine? <laughs> um, y'all want a six nine update before? Or I, I'll talk about those stuff, but like after, like you know, after I address this stuff, like I, I'm, it's not much back and forth. Okay, matter of fact, let's just do it now. Um. I'm reading the chat, by the way. Oh, no, I think it's one of Lloyd Banks update. That's crazy. You want a young boy update? This is third. Somebody said, as long as you're a good act. I'm good. I'm really in good spirits. It's, um, I'll tell you this. It's a bittersweet moment, as they call it. Today, while announcing it, I would like to call it more bitter than sweet. Um, Just because, you know, to kind of give the context... I'm one of them niggas who, once I get used to some shit, I'm, I rock with it for a really long time, okay? But I get straight to it. Uh, and, and really, I'm doing this a little bit early, but I'm doing it for my audience, even though there's probably other people not here, but you will also see in about an hour and a half. Uh, my time on Everyday Struggle is over. Ultimately, and as well, everyday struggle is over. This is something that I'm preemptively letting you guys know because it's not over today. We have about two weeks left, but the show will conclude, I believe the official and last date is December 17th. I'll explain the whole bittersweet because no matter, I've seen the comments time and time again. I've seen the YouTube videos from YouTubers saying, act, leave, do this. Um, there's a lot to be explained. <clears throat> so in trying to explain it to you guys without me just saying that, and then you're like, let, like you have a bunch of questions. Let me start with, let me just do the the, like, you know, when you hear anything or you find out anything, what's usually useful is the the where, when, why, who, and what happened, right? So the what is clearly that, again, my time with Everyday Struggle is complete, but also the show is going to end. The show is ending next month. <clears throat> I will be on the show until the show ends. Um, I'm pretty sure this might, I see, yo, chat, y'all, y'all, some, some, I would expect, I would expect somebody, somebody, I'm hoping y'all ask the why, <laughs> like, okay, why? But I could tell, you know, by the way, I've seen the comments, I've seen, I've seen, this is something I've seen a lot of times where clearly y'all wanted me to leave, well, a lot of y'all, I'm not saying all y'all, y'all want me to leave, yo, you should did this, you should did that. Cool. But I'll answer the why in case anyone does care. <clears throat> the why of why the show is ending, I think me and Complex are going in different directions. At least how we see everyday struggle as how we see maybe my employment for everyday struggle as how we see my brand and how they see me as someone who's worked there for a while. To be very clear and give context for people, Everyday Struggle was the only Aaron show on Complex's media platform that was 
airing multiple times per week. Their two biggest shows are Sneaker Shopping and Hot Ones. It's a weekly show. Also, which I'll, I'll try to explain, but I know in my, I, I'm only here to explain to my audience. I'm not here to explain to the industry heads. You guys can make whatever opinion. A lot of y'all don't like me anyway, so I'm not here to explain to y'all. I'm here to explain to my audience. Sneaker shopping, hot ones, they they, they do well as well. So, you know, they do good. But the, those shows are definitely... Um, um, there's a lot more... I'm going to get into that later. Anyway, <clears throat> the basic thing is that I knew this about a month ago. I want to believe it was a month ago. And I do want to give, I'm going to be very transparent here because I don't know if they will be. But I came up off being transparent. And honestly, I could tell you some of the last couple conversations with Complex was maybe a argument on transparency, which I felt they were neglecting how big my brand was and how I needed to act or communicate because of that. And maybe they were thinking that I could just operate like a complex employee. I will say overall, I have nothing bad to say about complex. But um, I want to salute to my sister, Nadeska, who made it a point that this announcement come from the team. Otherwise, about a month ago, you would have got a very dry statement that we will not be. And by the way, I knew this a month ago. So if you listen to the streams, you could probably, I just wasn't going to say it. Um, I want to salute to Nadesco who made it a point to say, hey, this is going to come from us, not a dry, heartless press release, because despite whatever, there are people and there's an audience for everyday struggle. Okay? I'll give you a little bit more context. Two things. And I'll also answer questions that maybe you have. Yes, it was a very weird moment with the Chrissy Teigen thing. But it wasn't only that. I have received calls from them about other content that they felt... I probably or shouldn't be engaging in. And I, I specifically told them, I said, listen, while you may look at me as I'm the guy on your show, I have a whole different brand to run. And I said, you guys, when Freddie Gibbs was on his thing, right? Remember, remember I got suspended for, for, um, for, I got suspended for, what was it? I got suspended for, uh, um, my little, it was a Twitch thing, and I referred to Chrissy Teigen, whatever, whatever, I don't, whatever. But I, I remember saying to them, if you guys are going to police what I do off of your platform, not realizing that I have to defend my own platform that I'm building, I never came here to be an employee. You should also keep the same energy. I felt it was a spit in the face when Complex, while trying to tell me that I should shut the fuck up, almost, or just, hey, listen, we are getting you in trouble for this. You said something about Chrissy Teigen that's not okay. They awarded, I mean, literally a couple days after, they awarded Freddie Gibbs with, like, lyricist or, like, some, some like, award. Even though he was saying that he couldn't wait till I die that he could spit on my casket. It told me a lot. It told me that for an artist who technically, and they told me, they said, technically, we're not paying him. And the team that does that does whatever they want to do. So it, it, it told me I was fighting with my hands behind my back. So I couldn't really deal with people. And by the way, here's the thing, and this is what I've always said about everyday struggle. Joe once said it too, but I, I also agree. You don't hire a controversial figure to not have controversy. 
It's like when the Vic Mensa thing happened. They said to me, yo, act. Yo, you got to tell us everybody you beefing with. Nigga, I'm known because niggas don't like me and some niggas like me. You should have did that due diligence. But if I have to let you know, you can't blame me when you're randomly booking people that you're booking people that don't like me. So already I could tell, you know, they, and by the way, you know, again, this is not an indictment on complex. I understand business. I run a business myself. But I'm going to be honest, the last conversation I had with, with someone of executive you know, control over there, I told him, I said, hey, I, I'm running a business as well. If you think I'm just going to shut up while these people say whatever about me because I'm working at Complex, I do have to then let you know that 90% of the income I'm getting is not because of Complex. And I, and I, I don't want to ever be the egotistical person to pull the card like, Yo, I'm bigger than Complex or bigger than any brand. But it felt like they were saying I should operate within their standards while they would bring on anyone who would slander me. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. They call me. This is before the Freddie Gibbs thing happened. They say, yo, Ak, Freddie Gibbs, we interviewed him for something. And the first thing he said was, yo, don't that nigga academics work here? He said a lot of really bad things. And they said to me, yeah, we're going to edit that out. And really, I'm not for editing artists. Truth be told, because I say what I want to say. And I was like, mm, I don't think you got to the center. But they said, no, you, we fuck with you. We want to edit it. Now, this was their their stance. They wanted to step in and edit it however they want to edit it. They didn't want to, they didn't want someone who is an artist who allegedly they have no ties to slander me. So I think there was not editing, but it's just like, I think it's omitted, omitted. So it's not like they're changing his words. They just didn't put the part where he was trying to single out and take shots at me. Again, I was cool with it, but honestly, I did appreciate the heads up. But here's the thing, and I think this is where, like, you know, you're always going to run into this. I think Joe ran, ran into this. It's company versus creator. A creator is helping and maybe has, like, brought stuff to a company for a while. And the company's kind of with them. But, like, at the end of the day, they're about the bottom line. They're not They're not necessarily loyalty. For example, I'll give you, I'll, I'll say this. In 2017, and this is where I got to go back. Why did I join Complex at all? Because, by the way, I watch all these YouTube videos you guys sent to me. And I joined Complex. I was making six figures a month off YouTube. I don't care who knew me, whatever, whatever. I was making, I was amazing. I will tell you this. Freddie Gibbs doesn't make six figures a month. That was me in 2016. So just put that out there. I didn't need Complex. But I didn't look at my brand as this isn't just the YouTube thing this is something and I always looked up to Q from World Star this is something that is a multi it's an international mainstream brand and I felt complex would help me accomplish certain things that you know I just couldn't accomplish on YouTube and I still believe they did and for that I am always forever grateful when anyone asks me why did you go to complex I was dominating my field and I wanted to I wanted to box with the big boys. I wanted my name to be mentioned with the Charlemagnes and other people like that. I looked up to Charlemagne coming up. So <clears throat> when you ask me why I went to Complex, that was the thing. Okay? But I will let you know within year one of me even dealing with Joe on that show. Joe left nine months later. No, like as much as Joe is so memorable in everyday struggles history, Wayno has been on the show for about two plus years. I feel Joe was there for nine months. Let that sink in. I only say that because. 
I wanted to be in the mix. And honestly, I am not regretful of it. But I do remember what Complex was at that time. Joe has told y'all, when me and Joe walked into that building, they had a whole bunch of people who were doing video, a whole bunch of people who were writing. The guy who talked to me who said he had a whole team studying my YouTube channel. This is 2016. I'm covering Drake and Meek Beef in 2015. Covering Drake and Meek. Three weeks later, him nor anyone he hired was there. They fired everybody. It's like, oh, we're hiring you to study these niggas, but we just hire these niggas. You're obsolete. Fired. <clears throat> I only speak the truth. Nobody, Complex Joe, nobody else would ever discount anything I'm saying on the stream. When I went there and the people who were hired there, I saw them all go. I didn't even understand the magnitude of it. Joe did. I didn't. It was new. I've never been on camera. <clears throat> I guess why I'm telling you that part of the story is because things changed. If you ever ask me what I'm ever guilty of, and I've me and my me and my niggas like this is outside like you know like um, career shit. Leaf all my other homies that you know we went to college. Sometimes we've been guilty of staying at the party too long. And <clears throat> nine months in, Joe left. Joe kind of offered an olive branch, not olive branch, but like invitation to come to Revolt. I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't with it. I'm going to be honest with you just because I just got a lawyer. If y'all not talking to me, like, joke, I, listen, I'm not Ruri, and I'm not that meanly mall nigga, Okay. It should be very evident in what I've built because them bum ass niggas are struggling. Facts. I'm going to be all right. You know, I like what, what Joe did because you see even right now, Joe, Joe, be make, Joe making millions. You don't care. You see them little bum ass niggas that y'all be like Rory and Medium. Them niggas is living from check to check. Them niggas is really down bad. That was never me. Ask Joe what I pulled up to his crib very first time. Pulled up, I pulled up to his crib with a $180,000 car. G-Wagon. Facts. I got that from YouTube. I was doing really well. I was making 100000 a month. We went to Complex. They were giving us 10000 for, it was supposed to be a weekly show. Joe and his ambition, Joe is a good creative. He's a great creative, actually. He said, fuck a weekly show. We need to do this daily. So we accepted the terms for a daily show. I said, hmm. Again, I was never there for money. I didn't collect a check from them for six months. I'm good already. <clears throat> but that's the parallel in between where I've been. I wanted to be a mainstream name, not just a YouTube guy. And by the way, this is where I give Complex their credit. But even though I'm giving Complex, like, I really want to give it to my team. I remember after the Migos thing happened when we went to the BT Awards, we were so unhappy with Complex. So unhappy. So, so, so unhappy. But I'm going to be honest with you, like, the our team handling is great. I remember being in that room with that Migos thing that everybody seemed. I remember after that Migos show when I got, got back to Jersey, <clears throat> somebody looked at me and be like, I know you because of a meme. And I was like, what? But, like, it, it went crazy. I remember being in that room like, yo, nah, like, we should delete it. I remember Joe's like, fuck it, let it rock. I remember other people in the room saying, no, we got to talk to Complex, like, you know what I mean, their head staff and whatever, whatever. And we made a decision in that room, even me, to say, fuck it. Let it rock now. Let's not wait for the executives to approve it. In three hours of that video being out, we knew the magnitude of it. It's a defining video. 
I would say of everyone's career, me, Joe, even the Deskins. But I think that was a, a, a test to where, um, what was the thing getting me to the point that I came to Complex 40? Granted, let me tell you why I came to Complex. I've been rich for five plus years. I am really good. I didn't come to Complex to get the bag. <laughs> Let me let let me be very clear. So just let me again, let me reiterate. I was getting a hundred thousand dollars plus a month on YouTube. Complex paid us ten thousand a month. So literally a month of YouTube equaled ten months of complex. But it was this elusive industry that I wanted to be a part of. I didn't want to be the YouTube guy. I wanted to be the guy that when you saw him. I was synonymous with hip hop. And by the way, I do think I accomplished that. But that is where I sat for the last especially especially year. Joe moved on quickly because of his own reasons. It's neither it's not on me to speak on his reasons, but I can speak on mine. He moved on after 9 months. I stayed on for 3 and a half years. By the way, it's 3 and a half years I've done the show. What I came to Complex for, to be ingratiated with an industry which is so fake, but to be known as a household academics name, I accomplished, I think, rather quickly. My thoughts on Complex and my thoughts on what I was doing was very different. Um... <clears throat> Someone said, 100K off YouTube, that got to be cap. Trust me, that's not cap. Go to 2016. Hold on. I'm glad you called it cap. But for whoever called it cap, I did almost 400 million, million YouTube views in. Hold on. That's off my main channel. 400 million YouTube views in 2017, actually. 2017 off my main channel. All around, I did half a billion views. If you don't think I was making 100000 a month, you're fucking retarded. I think I was doing mad videos. Are you fucking stupid? Let me just say again. Off one channel. Remember I was doing mad channels? At least. Yo, I could I could bring it up here. I don't know if I could hide the, 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 the amount I made that month, that, that year. But I did 400 million views. I did half a billion. I want you to look at even... No disrespect to No Jumper. No Jumper still hasn't hit a billion views. I did that in a year. Half of it. I'm just only saying this to y'all. I'm just saying this to y'all. Because, like, sometimes, you know, some people try to... Don't play with the chat niggas. Don't play with me. This is no cap. I got mad channels. Y'all know that. Okay? So, it wasn't money. I didn't ever come to Complex for money. I'm, I will admit, though, YouTube did get a little weird, which, by the way, I ain't going to lie. I think YouTube is about fixing stuff. So, anyway, I'm, I'm speaking really fluid. So, Joe leaves. I kid you not, one of the reasons why I stayed at Everyday Struggle. First of all, I don't care what Joe said, and that's why me and him, I felt like me and him, we were a little static at first. Because when he would mention me and the reason why I stayed, I am not Rory. Rory is literally a bum that I'm going to hire next season to mow my lawn. Actually, I just realized I might have a leak on my roof. I'm going to have Rory on my fucking roof with a fucking bungee cord tied to him. If he dies, he fucking dies. He's going to clean my pool. I'm going to make sure he could afford his little wedding. Okay? The mealy mall nigga, that's a straight bum. Straight bum. Facts. I like that shit on the niggas. <laughs> no, 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 but no, hold on. But, but, but in reality, um, yeah, so my whole thing was that, yo, I'm, I'm good. I'm doing good. Um, Joe's doing good. <laughs> 
I stayed on Everyday Struggle because of my cast. I remember the conversations with me in the desk, which I won't bring up here, but like, you know, like I, I felt like I was becoming a traitor if I left. Like, I kid you not. And you want to know why I inflamed Ruri and, and Mealy Mall? Ruri and Mealy Mall, none of you fucking bums can show us a fucking contract that you ever signed with Spotify. Because, yeah, I didn't, nigga. Y'all was talking about me like y'all actually was bosses, but you're not bosses. I, stay, I say that and I still maintain that. That's why you won't get me slander and complex. Even if we have a difference in how we see the future, it's fine. But you won't have me slander and complex. You know why? Because truth be told, and Joe knows this, the shit that Joe was beefing with complex for, when they knew I was up in the air, they gave it to me. I own, I told y'all, I I own on the sticks, everyday struggle. After that, I've gotten a percentage of all the income, despite what it is, up or down. I'm a partner. Joe fought for that. For whatever reason, again, I'm not going to get into what he asked for, but that wasn't the case for him. So that's the exact reason when I saw them little bum-ass niggas speaking on me, I was really infuriated. But I don't have nothing bad to say about Complex when it comes to that, right? Um, I'm I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. I think the writing was on the wall, not when Joe left, because you you all saw they tried to bring Star in, blah blah. blah. Listen, I'm here with the I'm here with the fucking Uzi. Anybody could get it. I don't care who y'all bring across from me. I'm here to debate. I'm here, whatever, whatever. I'm like, y'all already know. Y'all don't know what to expect from me when I get on stream or whatever, whatever. Y'all could bring my biggest enemy here. We gonna be debating. I don't give a fuck. I'm here. I don't care. I am here. I'm here for the sauce every fucking day. And I had to get over that because I remember when, like, yo, Joe was just really good at, like, the, the, the everything. And I remember I was like, yo, fuck, this nigga's. And y'all used to be like, act leave. And I'm like, nah, I ain't about to leave this shit, man. I'm about to sit here and figure out how to. And I wish, I promise you, I wish now, like, with the skill set I've, I've gained, I could really go back and forth to Joe. Because that nigga used like, I used to be clueless. I kid you not. And I'm glad, you know, yo, 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 I'm so, I'm so, so, so proud of Wayno. Everybody, like, if you respect me, if you love me, you have to show Wayno some respect and support. Wayno was somebody who's just on Twitter. I'm going to show some love to Nadeska. Nadeska was like, yo, we should bring him in for whatever, whatever. Like, he'd be like tweeting, so, and, I, and we're like, whatever. And the first the first couple of times, we're like, uh. And I think, yo, he learned he was always a manager of artists. He was never a personality. And truth be told, he learned. I want to give him so much credit. But I know how complex is. Complex wanted, they wanted to create Joe again. You can't create Joe again. This is where we get to in right now. For any company, let me just reiterate something I know Joe has definitely said. You cannot create another Joe. You cannot create another academics. You cannot create another person who is them. You can't create another Charlemagne. You just can't. And I'm going to be honest, the the turning point with me with Complex, because I'll tell you, again, I don't know their side. I'll tell you mine. Last Complex Con. Was it last Complex Con? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Last Complex Con. One of the leaders of Complex who fought for the show because they understood culture. They understood culture. And and I'll explain what that means. You know, everything with Joe been saying, whatever, whatever about Complex. I, I, I again, yo, I have nothing... I'm not, I have no gripes against Complex. Please do not send hate towards them.
because I'm not a bitter, disgruntled person. When this decision was finalized and whatever, whatever, and I was there, I could tell you I was like, I understand because I'm a business person myself. When I... Joe was infuriated by Complex because it was the first time Complex was ever being mentioned in the conversation of hip-hop. Yet they would tell us on a business level, uh, we can't sell ads. Y'all be cursing too much. Y'all be doing this. And Joe is there like, what the fuck? So we got this shit lit as hell. And y'all tell me y'all can't sell ads. Y'all can't bring the money into the attention that we're bringing. Joe's a lot less patient and also a lot more seasoned than me. So I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, I'm believing or whatever, whatever. But also, there's a few people who were rocking with me, who were rocking with us, rocking with the show. And I want to I want to give a, a huge salute to my man Cornell. When Joe left, some of the, even the resentment I felt in how he talked about everyday struggle, because you could talk about the white people this and third. The people who made sure the show, even with me and Joe, continued. There were a couple black people there. Still to my man Cornell. And I remember telling them, I'm like, yo, damn. Yo, Joe got this, like, really put out to the audience. Like, yo, it's just a bunch of white people oppressing black dudes. And he don't, like, he's not even acknowledging that, yo, whatever. Or if he does acknowledge y'all, he says, y'all y'all with the, the white people shit. But I know y'all are going there and y'all fighting fights for cultural shit. Whatever. This is not it's not a Joe Button slander and thing anyway. I love Joe. Me and Joe talked. Joe called me two days ago. Joe was like, yo, Ack, I heard the news. <laughs> yo, Joe, how the fuck you heard the news? But anyway, I love Joe. We talked. Good conversation. So I guess what I was trying to say is that um if you ask me why everything is happening now, one of the dudes, even after Joe left. It's two black dudes. I won't mention their names. I mentioned one already, but I won't keep doing it. They rocked out for us, bro. Like, they they defended us because, again, the sales team would come back. Yo, we can't sell this show. How can't you sell a show that's the only thing that's culturally relevant on you? Again, I'm not here to also attack Complex because I do think I've realized they're in a different type of thing. The big marker for me, so Joe's gone. The big marker, remember I came back. My audience, I remember talking to Nadeska when she was whatever. I felt like I was just like selling them out. If Like they were all hitting me, blah, blah. Like they were showing me like, yo, you know, like just to let you know, just some of the stuff Joe's saying, and we'll just show you the receipts, blah, blah, blah. Like you can just follow Joe, but whatever, whatever. Also my team, everybody else, I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm just nobody's son. I'm not Ruri. Ruri don't Ruri is literally a homeless nigga without Joe. Facts. So is that Mealy Mall nigga. Facts. I think I'm a grown ass man. As I said, I walked in making a hundred grand a month before I ever met Joe. So again, I wanted to make decisions for myself. So like, even though whatever, whatever, I start seeing things and also I'm talking to everyone. I'm like, you know what? The ultimate decision maker is that the people who wanted to give Joe a contract didn't contact me directly. So they didn't think they must think I'm yo, if you bought to hire Joe and his group of niggas, you don't gotta talk to them bum ass niggas. Just talk to Joe. Joe will give you a deal for all five of them. It cannot happen for academics. I'm I like I I build this shit with my sweat, tears. It will never happen. Joe Button cannot negotiate. Any deal for me. Never. And I love Charlamagne. Charlamagne text me. No. If you don't talk to me and my lawyers, it's not happening. I am a man at the end of the day. And by the way, this is what well, people like, yo, oh, you're showing off this. Y'all let me know when Mealy Mall or that Ruri nigga show off a mansion. Cars all over the place. You know why? Because they don't got like that. Nigga, I'm not desperate like that. So when I saw that revolt never hit me up, I said, all right, cool. Complexes, they gave me everything. They're like, yo, just, yo, we're down to work on certain things to try to make you happy, blah, blah. I 
and also my team. I'm really key on my team. The people who are behind the scenes at Everyday Struggle, I love them so much. I'm going to tell you why I love them, because I was the first time on camera. I was like, I was a virgin. Like I'd, I'd never been on camera, been on any big production. I was doing YouTube in my home. I never, ever, like my sound man, like the producers, the people who were like just trying to, like all, that worked around the show, they realized they were dealing with the baby. And to be honest, they, they took a lot of care of me. And after that happened for about a year, it felt like I was, and y'all could call me a sucker. I don't care what y'all say. Man, I felt I had a little bit of allegiance to them. So I wasn't going to run to some shit that they weren't giving me, like another company who ain't even talking to me. How did he going to try to bring me to Revolt with Joe and, and he don't hit me up? Did he hit me up about Ciroc? He ain't hit me up about being with Joe. I'm good. My team here, Complex, give me, they're, they're offering or whatever. They said, just work it out with us, blah, blah. Of course, I stayed. And um, I, I'm really trying to make a, a long story short. It was probably the beginning of this year, but really the ending of last year. That the people who used to be in our corner, and I'm going to compare it to baseball. That person left. Cornell, I love you. I see you're doing some great stuff. I support you all the way. There was a, there was a time I didn't know whose side you were on, but nigga, you look like us. We the same skin color. You've worked in very shitty situations, but you you're a worker, and you also defended us. I never knew this shit. And when you left Complex, I'm gonna equate it to baseball. It's like when a new owner comes in, or maybe football, when a new coach comes in and they're looking like, I ain't draft these niggas, whatever, whatever. So things was a little weird this whole year. Think about it. New coach, they're saying, uh, I got to manage these niggas. I ain't really draft them. The guy who was rocking for us and riding for us, putting his, his own job title on the line for us, he left. And he gave me the heads up. He said, yo, it's going to be different because I'm leaving. I learned it and I realized it. But also the reasons why they hired us, I realized that it started to crumble. They hired controversial niggas. And when the new management came in, they started looking at us like, whoa, too controversial. And I'm like, that's why you hired me. Y'all put like a 10 second fucking thing before the episode. You hired me for this. Uh, hold on, man. We ain't. Then I started getting other calls. Yeah, yeah, you gotta like, you should probably like operate a little bit in line with like how complex is. And I'm like, wait, hold on now. I'm not a full time worker of y'all. Like, I do a show with y'all and a couple other things. But it was that point I realized that. We were going in different directions. Also, I was looking at their business, you know, what what shows and businesses and where, where, where they were going. And I was like, we're doing a video show here. Not even to mention, remember when Joe got with the Spotify? Literally, we do the show in Times Square. Nigga, every, every day they send a car for me and I drive into Times Square to show up at Complex. And I see Joe and the two fucking studios. They're small, they're small in the thing. But they're in the biggest billboard. And I'm looking at Complex. I'm like, you can't put me the desk and Wayne on a billboard? Okay. I got
It may you out here. Fending for yourself. Um, I'm going to speed it up again. So the Chrissy Teigen thing happened, blah, blah. They did want to speak about new. And this is the only thing I, I, I kind of, I don't know if I kind of feel guilty about. They offered me a contract and I looked at a shorter period. I said, we'll, we'll take the contract, but not for the time that you wanted us to take it. We don't want to do that much time. And I, I do think there might have been a, a doubt in their mind and it's academics committed because I'll tell you this now, I'm just not a fake nigga. Like all my contracts with them is that If I sign with y'all, it's for a year. Y'all could cancel a show. Y'all could do whatever y'all want. Pay me my money. Facts. I'm not playing around with y'all. Salute to my lawyer. If we sign. You can cancel the show tomorrow. You're going to pay me for fucking 12 months. Done. And um, they wanted a, a longer period than what's going to happen this time. And I'm not going to lie, we came back just because of how they were treating certain things. Things, it felt restrictive. We weren't dealing with the same people. I could definitely tell you that I told them I only want to be on the show. Well, well, not that, but I only want this current contract. To last till December. So there was already doubts. And I told them they offer it till next year. Something I said, no, we'll take the deal, but it has to exist till December and we'll talk about it. I will tell you the truth as well. I think they thought about like, yo, I don't know about his commitment. We've had multiple other conversations and they were like, yo, maybe we should just mutually all come to a, an agreement that let's wrap it up in December. So, if you ask me, I'm not upset at it. I am actually, um, I'm happy a little bit. Just. Because I don't like coexisting. And I know for a lot of people in this industry who watch, there's been a lot of people who envied the fact that I was put on the show. I will say to all you ho-ass niggas, I make a lot, let me say it three more times, a lot, a lot, a lot of money outside of everyday. 